Hey guys, what's up? Nakshon here. Create videos about many topics, to be honest. What connects them all is how to improve the quality of your life. So if it interests you, make sure to subscribe to the channel. Today, I want to react to Steve Maxwell talking on London Real with Brian about the Ido Polta method and whether or not Ido will change his philosophy in the future. I think what they're going to focus on is longevity because I've seen some videos of Steve Maxwell and he talks about how to move when you're older and what movements are good for your body in terms of longevity. So I think that will be the perspective. I think it will be a really interesting topic as someone who's been doing movement training for the last six years. And um, yeah, I want to see what uh, they have to say. So let's get started. I look to guys that have already passed through the other side. I'm loath to take advice from a 30 or 40 something. How old Zito? <laughs> Me? No, how old Zito Portel? Oh, probably in his mid 30s. Yeah, well, he's going to change his philosophy big time in 20 years, believe me. Maybe. He's not going to be doing half the shit he's doing now. <laughs> uh, listen, <laughs> I said the same damn thing. Someone told me that, I says, ah, man, that bullshit. It's like, no, nah, you do. But. Shout out to him having some minimalistic shoes there. I think it's a really interesting conversation to have. I think what many people view as what Ido does, as they only see like the flashy stuff, like the one arm handstand, the planches, the back flips, and the extreme, extremely strong man that does like these insane exercises on the rings, right? So that's what most people see. And I do agree that I think longevity wise, you won't be able to do it for such a long time. You can definitely maintain it and you can definitely bulletproof your wrists or prehab them so that you will be able to do a lot of these exercises when you're older as well. But I don't think they're meant to be done at a very old age because you obviously lose a lot of your strength and your joints become less strong and you can get injured faster, which makes a lot of sense. But I think what they're missing the point here is that movement training isn't just about strength. Of course, you can work on it, but it's not the main thing. I do agree with him that he won't be doing all of the things that Steve probably sees Ido doing, which are all of the flashy moves and stuff, but you can still move when you're older. That being said, I don't think movement training really has any specific focus on longevity. I think it's part of the conversation when you learn movement training, but it's really not the main focus. The focus is just learning how to move your body in many different ways and sometimes sacrificing your health and doing things that won't benefit you in terms of longevity. So yeah, I don't think it's really even meant to be such a longevity focused practice anyhow. But you can't be conservative when you're moving all your life. Well, you, let's put it this way. Yeah. You know, you got to take some risk. I mean, obviously, yeah. if you're playing jujitsu and I still get on the mat, or you know, a tough boy sport, you know, uh, any kind of contact sport, basketball, uh, soccer, you know, obviously, you know, the rough, rough sports. But even playing tennis or you know, golf, you expect at some point you're probably going to get hurt. It's kind of part of the game, is it not? Yeah. It's pretty hard to play soccer on. Yeah, any contact sport has a high, higher risk of injury than other sports for sure. Saturday with all your friends, and not get a tweak somewhere it just happens and you kind of accept that as being the nature of sport with your supplementary training it should never cause an injury if you're getting hurt doing supplementary training you got to take a hard look at what you're doing and why you're doing it his whole perspective is on being a specialist so if you are a football or soccer player obviously your focus is on being a better soccer player and not being a great mover, right? So if your supplemental practice, the thing you do off court hurts your goal of being able to be on court, then obviously it's, it's not good, right? But that's not the focus of movement training. In movement training, you don't have the goal of being a very good soccer player because we view the practice as, or the way we want to move our body in a generalist way. Not just, we're not just one thing. We don't want to do just one thing. We want to be able to do a lot of things okay than to be able to do one thing exceptionally well. So it's not even like the focus. So I don't see his point, but maybe he will get to it now. And <coughs> is the benefit to risk ratio worth it? Okay, it depends what you call something in the training. For some people doing the ring muscle up, might be their game day. So yeah. like they might be doing that and taking that, a few more risks. See, that's, the, that, that's where people get really confused between exercise versus recreation. 
a, a muscle up as a specific skill, strength skill, but still a skill that yeah. has nothing to do with anything else. It has nothing to do, it, mo most of it is non-transferable to any other activity. Yeah. It's just one. I don't know, having strong pulling motion is really good, although you can get it in pull-ups. Having good pushing mechanisms and being strong there is also really good, but also you can do just dips. So muscle up as a standalone exercise doesn't translate, maybe, sure. Yeah, but why does it have to? But I do agree that it is recreational. It doesn't have any specific goal. Movement training isn't trying to achieve something in terms of like being the best at something or competing with others. Although you can say muscle up is being used in gymnastics for competitions. So maybe it has something that you can do with it. But yeah, I think he's a bit missing the point. He's coming a bit too much with the perspective of a strength and conditioning coach of, okay, I want people to be strong because I want them to be able to perform at their sport at the highest level. But that's not the focus of movement training in any way. One of those things you do because it's kind of cool. But is the pain in your elbow or your shoulder worth it? Now, some people might say, yeah, but maybe five years from now they're saying, uh, I guess it really wasn't because now I got osteoarthritis and I developed this bone spur. Um, I think muscle up is a bad example for what he's trying to convey because you can strengthen your wrist and your shoulders to a point where muscle ups are going to be pretty safe for you even at a later age if you build it right, I think. Maybe I'm wrong, maybe it's extremely dangerous, although I don't see how it is. Maybe a planche is a better exercise suited for what he's trying to convey, right? So there are some exercises that put like insane, insane pressure and load on your joint and that can be risky, especially if you're looking to have any longevity. But a muscle up, it's not that risky, I would say. If you build it right, if you're not using too much momentum and if you progress with small steps and you gradually build these ranges of motion and your joints ability to, to move through these ranges of motion actively with no pain and with no real risk, you can, you can do it. But I think that's not really a good example. Wake up stiff and sore and pain every damn night. Only, okay. only you as an individual could answer that, that question. No one can answer it for you. Okay. But yep. on a one to ten scale, let's say being ten being the worst pain you've ever felt. What's the worst pain you ever felt? Um, gosh, I don't know. What was the first ten you could ever remember? I probably got, you know, blindsided in the head and got knocked, you know, dizzy or well, something. Well, you weren't feeling anything. <laughs> yeah. So I'd be like, Did you ever break anything? Or I, yeah, I broke one arm, broke a nose, but yeah, that doesn't that bad, you know. It was, yeah. But think of a 10 as like agony. Okay. My 10, you wanna hear my 10? Sure. When I was just a little boy, we were building tree forts and uh, being stupid little kids were putting nails everywhere. I, I kind of lost my grip on the trunk and I slid down the tree and I tore my testicles on a nail. That was a 10. That's a 10. Okay, yeah. I trust you on that one. That was the first oh, 10. The geez. second 10 was the doctor sewing them up while four nurses held me down on the table. But that was from a very young age. Jeez. Okay. That, <laughs> and your point That's is horrible. what? My point is that on a one to 10 scale, 10 meaning agony, the worst pain you can think of, never let the pain of any movement or any exercise go above an uncomfortable four. Okay. Pain is a warning. Yeah, it makes sense. Movement isn't supposed to be painful, although pain is part of the practice. So you're not supposed to do movements that will cause you pain, but you have to go through pain in some way to achieve specific things, but it's very specific kinds of pain. So if you work on flexibility, for example, and you want to have more range of motion in your hamstrings, learning to go through that deep stretch and that lengthening of the muscle is not a very, how would I say? It? It's not a very fun experience. You go through some pain, right? And with some exercises, pain is not necessarily a bad thing, but as a general rule of thumb, yeah, sure, you don't want to go through pain. But again, it's kind of missing his point. He's talking about a muscle up, which isn't really an extreme exercise. It's not that advanced in any way. Many people can do it and you can definitely build it so that it won't hurt you at all. And I, I'm sure you can do it at a later age as well, if you maintain it and if you build 
if you do enough shoulder prehab and if you bulletproof your wrist and your elbow like you can do it i don't it's not really that extreme but yeah i, I think this whole conversation is just coming from the point of view of uh, Iro is just this insane athlete who can do these like extreme exercises but it's really missing what movement training is like they don't talk about working on spine waves they don't talk about doing some coordination work or balance work or maybe even handstands can be an argument for them right because handstands you place a lot of load on your wrist which is a very very small joint that you have and that can degrade that joint over a lot of years that you did maybe that would be an example for that but even then like movement training isn't just about handstands so it's it's a much bigger picture than that than what they're talking about they're just talking about the outwards picture or image of what movement training is because of what Ido does in terms of marketing now the content that he shows are these flashy and really cool moves but when you dive a bit deeper you see that there's much much more beneath it it's really not just about these movements it's it's sometimes about the most unsexy movements you can ever think about, the most unflashy movements you can think about, and there's nothing really extreme or dangerous about them. It's a lot more about how to learn how to move your body. It's not about how to be the coolest person in the room. It's saying, stop. Okay. Your body's telling you to stop. There's something wrong. If you drive through pain, you're going to suffer later. Okay. You're either going to cause a permanent injury or a permanent debility, that's what I did with this shoulder. I was driving myself in the sport of kettlebell lifting, doing snatches. And I was trying to better my mark every time. Dry, even allow myself to get in the kind of crappy form just to get a couple extra reps. It came back to bite me because I was, I was ignoring the pain and I was allowing my form to deteriorate. Yeah, it makes sense. Now I have an osteophyte. It's like a bone spur in the shoulder, which causes me a lot of discomfort. Okay, so I think... Again, this whole conversation comes from a very, I would say, not educated point of view on what Ido does and what movement training is. It's not about doing these very flashy moves. It's also about that. It can be part of that if that's what you want. It doesn't have to be that at all. You, I know some people who do movement training who don't touch planches. I don't touch planches. I hate this movement. And they don't do one on handstands and they don't do a lot of very risky things because what they really love about movement is learning how to move softly and slowly and have nothing to do with extreme movements and they just don't suffer any of it. I just think it's an uneducated opinion not to talk shit about him in any way. I think he's a great man. I don't know him too well but I don't think he, he said anything wrong for his perspective but it is wrong when you look at it from my point of view of someone who's done it for six years now. So it is missing a lot for sure. And I guess what he's trying to say is that it's a very classic opinion and a very important one as well of don't focus too much on being cool, focus on having some longevity in your body because if you burn yourself out and do so much work in your teen years or early years and work on some extreme movements and sacrifice everything just to be able to do that, you won't be able to do anything when you're older and I can definitely agree with that. Also, I do agree that movement training doesn't have the focus of longevity. It's not focused on that at all. Some aspects of it do have these benefits like moving your spine a lot, prehabbing your joints all the time, working on balance. I'm sure there are many other examples, but it's not the focus of it. And for me, I feel like I do want to focus a bit more longevity than what I've seen in the movement world, but I don't think the movement world, even though it's not focused on longevity, it's also not focused on burning yourself and doing everything too fast and destroying yourself. Some people do that for sure, but I don't think that's the essence of movement training in any way. So. Um, yeah, let me know what you guys think. Did you meet people who do movement training who did burn themselves out? Do you focus on longevity in your own practice? Is that something you really think about? And if you do, then what exercises do you work on? Like, how do you approach it? Would be really interesting to hear it, to be honest. Um, yeah, let me know down in the comments. Also, make sure to subscribe to the channel if this content interests you. I create a lot more videos about movement training. I'll be uploading a video soon about some exercises you can do to progress from a normal pull-up so if that interests you in any way make sure to subscribe and hit that like button if you like this video um yeah hopefully you'll have a good day so um good luck and peace